Hello and welcome to Jurisa Academy's YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be reviewing the constitutional law questions in the CLAT PG 2021 paper. So we have also made videos covering 2022 and 2023 paper for constitutional law questions. If you're interested, do check those out as well. So let's see what questions were tested from constitutional law in this paper. So you can see that this was the pattern in which they were asking six questions per passage. So the first question that was there on constitutional law was on the very important case that has just come out then. So this is a judgment of the Supreme Court on the issue of um, gender stereotypes in uh, you know uh, public services and especially about the case of permanent commission in the Indian Army. So the first question that was asked was about the name of the case and which of the following judgments relating to equality of opportunity is the excerpt taken from. So that was, as this was a recent case, the answer was very clear to everyone. The answer was Ministry of Defense versus Babita Punya. The next question was a little particular. It was about the fact that which of the following is not a direction given by the Supreme Court in this case. So you can see the options are very uh, confusing. They are very close. So people who had studied the judgment very, very carefully, only they must have been able to answer it. So the correct answer to this question was option A. Next question was, that women officers would upset the dynamics in a unit is a dash ground for denying them permanent commission. So they were asking that this argument where we say that having women officers will upset the dynamics of the unit, what kind of an argument this is. So we're looking at the options, you will get an understanding that it is not an inve inevitable argument. It's not a strong argument, clearly. It is clearly not a valid argument, but it is an unreasonable argument. Next question was from the judgments. They were asking that among these four options, which of the following is not related to equality of opportunity in public employment? So if you have studied the topic of reservations very uh, clearly under Article 15 and 16, you would know that the first three cases are on Article 16. So for example, Jeshri Lakshman Rao Patil was a landmark judgment on Maratha reservation case. Indra Soni is the landmark judgment of 1992 on the interpretation of Article 15 and 16. And M. Nagraj is again a very landmark judgment uh, on... Uh, uh, article 16 again. So the correct answer was option D because this is not related to equality of opportunity in public employment. Next question was uh, with respect to uh, blanket restriction of women officers in army. They were asking that which of the following is correct. So you had to evaluate the four options and then you had to click uh, the option that is most reasonable. So in this case, having blanket reservation is an absolute bar on women seeking criteria or command appointments would not comport with a guarantee of Article 14 because all the other options are not aligning with the outcome. Last question was again from judgments. They were asking that which recent case has come up with respect to prenatal sex determination as a grave offense. So from the four options, you had to choose the right option. So as you can see that in 2021, these cases were quite recent. Amish Devgan is a case on criminal law S. Vanita was a case on family law uh, and Rekha Sengar was a judgment which was recent also and which was clearly on the issue of prenatal sex determination. So this was a case uh, from the recent judgments prevalent at that time. Now coming to the second passage that was there on constitutional law, it was on right to property under Article 308. First question was very easy. They were asking that right to property ceased to be a fundamental right by which amendment? So the correct answer was 44th amendment. Next question was, it was a little difficult because they, because they were asking landmark cases on 300A, which are commonly not read by students. So second question was that in which of the following cases, Supreme Court held that provisions of law seeking to divest right to property must be strictly construed. So the correct option was option A. Next question was that right to property is a basic human right, which of the following is true with respect to this. So they were asking about the status of human rights in India. So the correct answer was both option A and uh, B. And option C was not the right answer because human rights are not statutory rights. Okay? So human rights, although there is a legislation which uh, provides for making a commission for human rights, but it does not really solidify human rights as statutory rights. So only option A and B were correct. Hence, option D is the right answer. Next question was on a very important concept, eminent domain. They were asking Eminent domain, domain is defined as what? So eminent domain is the concept of, you know, the power of the sovereign or the state to take uh, a private property for public use without the consent of the owner after paying them just compensation. So the right answer is option C. Next question was about the jurists. They were asking that which of the following jurists said that property is the objective manifestation of the personality of an individual. So the right answer was Hegel. 
Last question was that which of the following statement is true with respect to right to property? So the first option was that right to property is recognized under right to life. It is incorrect. Next was right to property uh, is part of right to carry on any occupation, trade or business. That is also incorrect. Uh, third option was correct that right to property is not a basic feature of the constitution because option D is also incorrect because right to property is an alienable right. So these were the next set of six questions on constitutional law. Now coming to the next passage, the next passage was on the issue of um, open courts. So they were they gave a passage on the fact that courts should be open and the importance of public trial. So the first question was that in which of the following cases Supreme Court held that even if the press is present, individual members of the public are refused admission, the proceedings cannot be considered to go on in open courts. So this was a lesser known case and the option was option C. Next was a, from a very landmark uh, relatively recent judgment in which they were asking key, in which case the Supreme Court noted that live streaming of court cases in, is an extension of the principle of open courts. So the right answer was Swipnal Tripathi was the Supreme Court of India, which was a very landmark judgment in 2018. Next question was that which of the following is true with respect to significance of open courts? First option was that it is pertinent that the public be informed regarding the working of the courts of justice. Yes, public trial in open court is detrimental to healthy justice. This is false. Trial held subject to public scrutiny is conducive to judicial caprice or vagaries. This is also false. So only the last option, that is option D, was found to be correct. That publicity is the very soul of justice as it keeps a judge himself while trying under trial. Okay. Next question was, which of the following statements is not true regarding applicability of rule of open court? So the correct answer was option A, that fair administration of justice is a means to ensure public trial and not an end. All the other options were found to be true. That in case of conflict between fair administration, public trial may have to be regulated. Open court principle is not inflexible and exceptions to rule of open court ensure that justice is never defeated. So you can see that these are not very objective questions that are directly given in the Bear Act or in case laws. They have to be derived after reading the statement. So this was something which required for you to read it very carefully. Next question was very straightforward. That which of the following provisions of CRPC provides for the concept of open court? So the right answer was 327. Bar. Next was that the prevalence of which of the following uh, is an obstacle to open court principle. So the right answer was lack of awareness about the court proceedings. Now moving on to the next set of questions on constitutional law. So this was the next set of questions on constitutional law in which they were asking from the concept of public interest litigation. So again, the, con uh, again, the questions were a little uh, subjective and you had to read the options to understand it more clearly. So first question was that which of the following is not correct with respect to PIL. So you have to read the four options and see which of the following is incorrect. So option C was incorrect, which said that the course to a proceeding under Article 32 may or may not be taken by a genuinely interested person because the understanding is that PIL should be filed by genuinely interested persons only. And that is why option C was incorrect. Next question was with respect to the public trust doctrine and the case in which it was discussed. So the right answer was option D, MC Mehta case. Next question was with respect to a judgment. Uh, again, this was a recent judgment in 2021. And that is why it was asked that in this case, um, what was the PIL about? So the right answer was reopening and providing services of Anganwadi centers in India. Next question was which of the following is not correct with respect to local standard. Uh, so you have to read the options and find out the incorrect answer. So the incorrect option was that only affected and vulnerable people can approach the court for remedy because we know that in PIL, uh, anybody, any publicly spirited citizen can approach the court for getting the remedy under this very particular concept of Article 32. So these were the questions that were tested under constitutional law in the 2021 paper. As you can see, it was a mix of recent questions and your conceptual understanding. So hopefully that has made you understand how to prepare for the upcoming exams. We'll also make a video where, we'll, where we will discuss the constitutional law questions from the 2020 Flat PG paper. Uh, if you like this video, please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.